Thanks so much, Kiana. Welcome back here to opening night at Super Bowl 58 for the Niners and the Chiefs. The Niners are getting underway right now for their media night. And I got to say, fellas, the atmosphere in this stadium is electric. The Niner gang is very loud and very proud. Were you guys surprised to see how hyped the Niner fans are compared to all the boos we've been hearing for Kansas City? Yeah, 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 look, I mean, Katie, we saw a ton of Niners fans flood this place. It feels like, and we, we've been through this before, but, you know, Kansas City's been to four of the last six Super Bowls. Clearly, you're going to have a situation where you're going to get more fans from the other team because Chiefs fans are used to, it, used to being here. They've been here a bunch, and I think we're going to see the Niners going to take over early in the week. They were booing the hell out of the Chiefs yeah. up on the stage. Travis Kelsey sort of engaging it, embracing it, and then when the, when the Niners came out, they're chanting, Purdy, Purdy, Kittle, Kittle. The only time we got something close to a boo was for Kyle Juszczyk. <laughs> yeah, and Katie over here has had the biggest smiles, our resident 49ers <laughs> homer yes. with, I mean, this really feels like an 80-20 in favor of the 49ers. Brinton, I think your theory is correct, where the Chiefs have been here so often that if you're a Chiefs fan, it's the fourth time in five years you've had a media night. Why even show up to this event? But if you're a 49ers fan, you've been a Super Bowl in 30 years. You want to be here. The city's geographically closer. 49ers fans are clearly uh, thrilled to be here tonight. Yes, and I am thrilled to be here as well, representing the Niner gang for CBS Sports. Here's the thing, though. Let's talk about that joint session that just happened, and you kind of touched on it with Travis Kelsey. Tight end university, that Kittle versus Kelsey. Breach, who do you give the edge to in this matchup? Well, look, George Kittle is a great tight end, and I would say he's even a better blocker than Travis Kelsey. Yeah, but I kind of said this on the Pick 6 podcast, that, uh, that George Kittle is a weapon in the 49ers offense. Travis Kelsey is the weapon in the yeah. Chiefs offense. And for me, that is the biggest difference. So I think I would give the edge to uh, yeah. uh, Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Okay, that's right. Taylor Swift's boyfriend is a guaranteed surefire <laughs> first ballot Hall of Famer when he retires. There's been some talk that it might be this offseason. I certainly think we and Patrick Mahomes hope that's not the case. With, with Kittle, I think you could say he's the more all-around well-rounded tight end, and he is one of the fulcrum points for this 49ers offense, but no one is as good as a tight end right now in the NFL as Travis Kelsey. Well, hard to argue with that. And, Breach, you kind of touched on this already. When you talk about the star power for the 49ers versus the Chiefs, I mean, no disrespect, but they had a kicker. The Chiefs had their kicker up there on the podium. You look at who's up here right now. you got Bosa, you got Fred Warner, you got CMC, Purdy, Ayuk, everybody. Let's talk difference in the stadium tonight. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Katie, we look at maybe how you might want to build a fantasy baseball roster, mm -hmm. stars and scrubs versus a well-balanced roster. And I'm not saying that the Chiefs have a bunch of scrubs, but they are top-heavy in terms of their best players. The guys, like, you could, once you got past Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and their two podiums, you could walk around freely without any issues whatsoever. The 49ers, as Breach points out, much more well-balanced. And, and I think that's sort of why you might consider that they are the favorites here because of all the depth across the board. They just don't have Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, and you look at it, and we saw earlier that Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, you couldn't get near them unless you got here two hours beforehand because that was the only way you were getting front row at those podiums. Uh, but when you look at the 49ers, you're looking at Christian McCaffrey. You're looking at Brandon Ayuk. You're looking at Debo Samuel. You're looking at Trent Williams. You have Coach Kyle Shanahan. It's Brock Birdie. You have more of an even split, uh, and that's what it is. The 49ers have the stars, and they're hoping the stars can carry them to uh, the first of all three decades, Katie. Oh, gosh, I hope so. You know, I was interested or surprised, rather, to see the booze that came for Andy Reid. Kyle Shanahan, of course, on a huge redemption tour here. He has been a part of two of the biggest blown leads in Super Bowl history, obviously the 28-3. And then this last time that these two teams went up against each other, they were up 21-10 at the half. Brinson, what does Shanahan have to do differently in the Super Bowl? Well, let's not forget that he was up 10 points against the Rams. My Rams, Matthew Stafford. Shout out. <laughs> uh, in the NFC Championship game when Los Angeles went on to win that Super Bowl. So there, that is definitely a big talking point here, Katie, that Kyle Shanahan can't finish in these big games. And so I think, like, to me, you, I've said this, I said this earlier, I'll say it again, I think you can see the Chiefs blow out the 49ers for that very reason. I don't think you can see the 49ers blow out the Chiefs. Kyle Shanahan needs to figure out a way, if he gets a lead, to keep his foot on the gas. And maybe that involves not trying to run it. Maybe it involves taking some play-action shots down the field, even when you have a lead. However he does it, you cannot let your foot off the gas, especially when you're playing Patrick Mahomes. And, and the dynamic here is interesting because Kyle 
Kyle Shanahan is going into this game as what Andy Reid was five years ago when all we talked about was that Andy Reid cannot win the big game. He would go in, we would make fun of his clock management because the Chiefs would lose in the playoffs. Uh, and now no one's making fun of Andy Reid because he has two Super Bowls and he's going for his third one in five years. And that's what happens when you finally win a Super Bowl. So if Kyle Shanahan can get that monkey off his back, we're going to stop talking about it and we're going to stop talking about how he's a top two or three coach in the NFL right up there with Andy Reid. But if he loses, Katie, I don't even want to think this thought out loud because it might hurt your feelings. But uh. if he loses... Oh, let's not hurt my feelings. That's John Breach and Will Brinson, guys, on the Pick 6 Podcast. Back to you guys in the studio.